Hi everybody, um, I'm Kate Lees and I am the Health and Wellbeing Lead for Worcestershire Health and Care NHS Trust. So we are um, a community mental health and learning disabilities trust across Worcestershire and also we have um, children's services and mental health services now in Herefordshire so we're spread across the two counties. Um, so all in all we've got about four and a half thousand staff now and um, me as the health and wellbeing lead, just me. Um, so a lot of my role ordinarily involves um, helping staff with all aspects of their health and wellbeing. Um, obviously we've had to change things slightly recently with uh, everything that's been going on um, and so one thing that has come up a lot has been around um, stress and resilience um, because you know it's getting to that point now where to begin with a lot of people were really on autopilot with the situation with COVID um, and it's now really that staff are feeling a bit worn out really with everything. Um, I mean obviously I'm from a public sector organisation I appreciate you know lots of your private sector organisations but I just wanted to talk to you a bit I mean initially this um, this session was called returning to work to the workplace managing stress and building resilience of your staff and for a lot of staff they have managed to return to the workplace but actually a lot of staff are still working from home as well so we're going to cover um, you know hope to give you some tips for, for both um, both those uh, groups of staff um, and just think as well when I was chatting with Olivia before we started thinking about your own resilience because very often we're all so busy worrying about everybody else and trying to make sure everyone else is okay but it's reminding ourselves that actually in order for us to be looking after everybody else we need to make sure we're looking after ourselves first and very often we forget about ourselves and you know we're on again autopilot sorting everybody else out making sure everything else is all right and then all of a sudden we can hit a bit of a wall so that's just something else I wanted to cover today and actually hear from you what you've been doing to um, maintain your resilience and your well-being during all of this. Um, because it has been, you know, generally in all of our workplaces, we can have stressful times. But at the moment with having to work, you know, we're working very differently. A lot of us, um, life is very different. It's not just about life inside work. It's life outside of work as well. So I have got some information to share with you afterwards and I have, um, I have got some slides that I did but I'm not going to share them. Um, I'm just going to sort of refer to them because I, I hopefully want us to have quite an interactive session today and do please you know, ask questions as we go along if you've got any comments. I've got the chat box open but like Olivia said just unmute yourself if you've got anything you do want to ask. Um, but really just wanted to you know, think about resilience and think about how things have been, have been different for us all um, recently. Think about yourself, think about your work-life balance. Actually, how, how has that been for you? Has it changed? Um, you know, I know I'm, I'm back in the office at the moment, um, but for many weeks I was working at home. And actually, it's, it's the things that we, at, um, we take for granted, like having a chat with our colleague as we go and make a cup of tea together, walking into the building with somebody and you might have a bit of a chat about work, but then it kind of like, oh, how's the kids booked anywhere to go on holiday? What, you know, do you go out at the weekend? And it's all these incidental contacts that we have throughout our working day ordinarily when we're not working at home that actually we don't realize the benefit of. Again, Olivia and I were talking and it's something I've talked to lots of my colleagues about. It's that commute to and from work, which is very often your time for, you know, getting into work mode on the way in, even if it's only a short commute, but then also once you've left work, kind of putting that work day to bed so you're ready then to be home, Kate, when you get home. Um, and these are all things that, you know, for those of us who work, have been working from home, have been very different and all then can have that knock on impact on our resilience. So, like I said, with, with the situation with COVID, when everything sort of kicked off earlier this year, Nobody really knew how long this was going to last. We kind of, oh, a couple of months time, this will be done and dusted. We'll get a vaccine and be sorted, you know, we'll all be back to normal. But actually now, nearly eight months on, um, we're, you know, we're, in a, we're on a, a marathon, not a sprint really, aren't we? Because actually we don't know how long these changes are going to, you know, everything's going to be so different for us and how we are going to have to work differently and live differently as well. So I think, and if we had a timeline and we had a timeline that we knew by by sort of you know end of march next year we'll all be back to normal 
we could probably cope with that, but it's, it's the unpredictability, it's the uncertainty that has a real um, impact on our resilience levels. So one of my colleagues, I did a, um, a presentation with him recently to, uh, to the, uh, to the um, clinical commissioning group of Hereford in Worcestershire. And one of his slides was a rusted out car because actually he was saying a, a way that a lot of people are feeling at the minute is, is rusted out really, you know, and we're lots of people are sort of facing that stress burnout time at the moment. So as I said, with, with COVID, there've been huge changes and massive disruptions, both to us socially and the communities we live in, as well as then within the workplace. And for a lot of companies, there have been a lot of uncertainty about, you know, future of businesses, et cetera. So it's thinking about actually, you know, how, we've, how we can do what we can to try and maintain our resilience during these times. So if you think about resilience, very often it's talked about as your, you know, your ability to, to bounce back from, from situations that you're faced with. But I found a couple of quotes from the Mind website, actually. So um, there may be times or situations in our lives that are more difficult than others. The capacity to stay mentally well during those times is what we call resilience. And resilience is not simply a person's ability to bounce back, but their capability to adapt in the face of challenging circumstances whilst maintaining a stable well-being. And I just thought actually they were really good, you know, really good quotes to think about when it comes to resilience. Because very often it's kind of like oh, we're bouncing back from something, but actually it's not just all about that. Um, and we need to really be aware of our resilience and be doing what we can to ensure that our resilience is, you know, is maintained. So does anyone want to either unmute themselves or put in a chat, what do you do at the moment to maintain your resilience? Anybody? Mine sometimes is drink a lot of gin, but that doesn't help in the long run. <laughs> Lisa, okay, uh, I, I don't mind kicking off. Um, it certainly feels like Groundhog Day for me on a personal level because I'm going to work and then not really doing much else with my time at the moment, Kate. Yeah. Um, but I suppose the way that I'm dealing with it and my colleagues in my immediate team at work are dealing with it is we're, we're just talking to one another, really, just having the opportunity to let it all out. Um, yeah. It's quite nice to know that, you know, you're not, you're not in it alone. And actually, once you start a conversation, it prompts other people to sort of engage as well. So. I guess the only way I'm really doing with it, I, I'm not one of these who would throw myself into exercise. Um, Joe no, Wicks tried his hardest, didn't he? <laughs> and didn't get me. Um, so yeah, all I'm doing is talking, Kate. Yeah, no, I think that's really good. And I think that's something a lot of our teams have been doing because like I said, a lot of people working differently, working at home, and we're not having those just general chat and banter in the office. You might be really busy, but we still all have it. And so it's making that time, be it virtually, WhatsApp groups, whatever, to actually have that and not feel guilty about it because we would be doing that at work normally anyway. So it's thinking about what you can introduce during your working day to try and maintain that contact and maintain those conversations. Um, one of our teams has been excellent at that. And throughout, um, throughout this whole situation, they have had sort of, once a week a 15 minute session they've done blankety blank um they've done i've been invited this week um because i'm an honorary member of the pediatric therapist team now because they've i've done some sessions for them um i think i've been invited to categories and a pub quiz or something over the next couple of weeks but they just had something just a short session just to kind of get together have a bit of a laugh and actually they're doing that during working time and that's fine because it's just helping to maintain their resilience Within their team as well, they've got, you know, I think there's somebody who does, yoga. a couple of people do yoga, there's a Zumba instructor, so they've, you know, done things more exercise, um, exercise route as well. So, so yeah, but anybody else got anything that they want to share that they've done to maintain their resilience? I am not one of these people as well. Perhaps I should be as the health and wellbeing lead. Like Lisa said, that's, you know, become a slave to Joe Wicks or, or anything like that. but. Um, I'm one of those. Oh, are you? Good. <laughs> <laughs> well I do, done. I, what? I, do, I do a lot of exercise. Yeah. And you find that's really helped? Yeah, it really helped. Yeah. So we're allowed back at the gym now as well. And they've got a really, really good setup there. Yeah. Um, really, really good. I'm really well impressed with it. So I'm like going three, four times a week straight from work. Yeah. Which is 
which is really good and also talking like Lisa mentioned as well mm. yeah oh that's really good and actually because exercise is good for your physical well-being but it is also good for your mental well-being as yeah, well definitely um, and it's that distraction so when you're doing it you are you know you're you're exercising you're focused so yeah. um you know yeah i need you to give me some tips then <laughs> <laughs> so, no i was i had good intentions at the start of uh, at the start of covid and i was going out for regular walks but um unfortunately i'm a fair weather walker now the, when I the weather's <laughs> changed a bit i'm not as um, i'm not as good yeah. but uh, but no thanks ever so much Thank anybody you. else Oh, Dawn, you, you're muted. There you are. Is that better? <laughs> That's um, better. I can yeah. hear you. Nice to see you. <laughs> Don't laugh, Olivia. <laughs> I always have trouble with technology. Um, I, I suppose for me, I, I've, I've always been a sort of a, um, what's the, the cup half full, that half empty person. So I, I really try to hone in on, on the positives. I know there aren't many at the moment. The situation has given us. So it's little things like, well, you know, you can have a half hour extra in bed because you don't have to get up and drive into work. And I know when the winter's here, and I'm, if, if I'm still working at home, which I'm sure I will be, I'll be looking at the frosty days thinking, thank goodness, I don't have to scrape my car, you know, spend 10 minutes scraping my car and demist the windows and I can stay in the warm. So I'm, you know, always try to pull out these little, little positives about the situation rather than focus on the negatives, which I know is easier said than done. But you know that that's the way I think. You know, what, what, what's the positive in this? You know, yeah, absolutely. Um, and that, that's a really, really good thing. Yeah, really good thing to do because actually, if we get into that negative frame of mind, then that's difficult to get out of. So it is looking for those positives in in how things are. I mean, again, for 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 me, it was doing more things actually as a family. It was spending more time at home. It was my gardens never looked so good this year. Um, so it is, you know, it's, but it's reminding yourself of those positive things. So thank you for sharing that. Has anybody else got anything they want to mention? No. Right then. I'm going to talk to you a little bit now then about your stress bucket. Has anybody heard of the stress bucket before? A couple of, a uh, couple of nods. So if you think about your stress bucket and I will share these with you. Um, this is from the um, Mental Health First Aid England um, slides. So think about your this. You've got a you've got a um, your stress bucket with things flowing into it, and your you you've got to keep your tap at the bottom of it um, in good working order so that it maintains the level within this stress bucket. Because what we don't want to happen with everything flowing in, it needs an outlet. And so we don't want it to get to the point where that outlet isn't working. So things are going in and going in and then that bucket overflows. So it's just quite a good reminder to have to think, right, well, what of all the things I've got flowing into my stress bucket? And actually, what have I got as my good coping mechanisms and my bad coping mechanisms at the bottom? So my good coping mechanisms are ones that mean that tap is free flowing and that, you know, so my light's just gone out. Um, it's free flowing and the stress is uh, you know your resilience is high and the stress isn't then getting to that point where the bucket's going to overflow but then thinking about actually then you know trying to um what you might be using as bad coping mechanisms to then try and you know flip those into something that is a more positive thing to be doing that is going to help maintain that within um the levels within that stress bucket so it's just that good reminder so that's included in the slides i'm going to share with olivia to send out so she can send that across to you. Another thing I think is quite a good way of thinking about our resilience is actually, if you were to say now, like how, how full is your battery? You know, as soon as our phone starts dipping below about 50%, I don't know if anyone else is like me, as soon as it gets to about 50%, I plug it in and recharge it. But actually, if you think about your battery charge at the moment, actually what's it on and what are you doing to plug yourself in to get yourself recharged up again and it's just a really simple one to you know to give you that reminder and and what are those things that are going to help recharge your batteries what are you going to do that's nice for you because very often we feel guilty for having spending time focusing on ourselves because we think of all the other things that we probably should be doing or we think that we should be doing because we can 
we expect a lot of ourselves and we often think that we're superman or superwoman but actually like i said earlier on it's thinking about we've got to look after ourselves so we're able to look after everybody else so does anybody think their battery is really well charged up at the moment Just pop it in the chat don't worry about unmuting yourself if you don't want to anybody think their battery is quite well charged or what would you say your percentage is at the minute mine's quite high because i had a nice long weekend so um someone said it changes every day oh 90 percent today though that's good anyone else what do you reckon yeah i reckon mine's about 75 probably today last week was a very busy stressful week and a couple of days it was probably on about five percent but uh but no it is just, so it's just another good reminder of how of looking at your resilience and thinking about actually how charged up is your battery and what it is you can do to try and then increase that percentage so overall well-being i'm i'm certainly not going to preach to you about exercise and diet and things exercise is great um, and it's working out exercise that you're going to stick to and that you are going to be able to um you know that's sustainable um we're probably all guilty of throwing ourselves into things and thinking you know we're going to be in the next olympics but then actually we, we if we haven't chosen the right thing or we're not doing something that fits in well with our lives we're not going to sustain it but it's finding something we enjoy and actually is something that we are going to be able to sustain so for some people that's going to the gym i used to play netball until i injured myself last year um and actually i i need to find my replacement and i really want to and i'm keen to but i haven't found it yet i bought a cross trainer it looks fabulous in my garage don't ask me how many times i've used it in the past month um but you know thinking about with exercise walking the dog going for a walk doing gardening actually you know thinking about vigorously doing your housework it doesn't all have to be about you know going out and playing a, a sport or like i said going to the gym with diet it's a good it's about healthy eating isn't it um it's it's as soon as we tell ourselves we shouldn't be having something the more we want of something but very often if our resilience is low we want all of the stuff that isn't probably as good for us but it's everything in moderation so it's just thinking about having that good balanced diet and one of the main things i think is drinking enough water and making sure and as you said i've reached well done lisa um reaching for those that are glass but um thinking about your caffeine intake as well and actually you know alcohol and smoking very often i mentioned my gin um, my gin intake may have gone up over the last few months um but the you know Oh, I've had a really rubbish day. I, I deserve a drink tonight because it's been really rubbish. But actually then, if that's happening every, every couple of nights, that's fine. But if it's becoming every single night, and um, I did at one point during lockdown, put on my phone the app that counts your units. Soon deleted that, it was getting quite depressing. Um, but it's, um, you know, it is having that awareness of your alcohol intake. If you're, if you're a smoker, are you smoking more? you know, actually with your caffeine intake, is that how, you know, is that more than it should be? And actually then sleep is a really important thing. With caffeine, and if you're having trouble sleeping, the advice from my colleagues in mental health would be that actually you shouldn't have caffeine after around midday if you have trouble sleeping. So you should switch to decaffeinated drinks or water and things and obviously again alcohol can help with sleep initially but then very often it disrupts sleep you know can help you get to sleep but disrupts sleep later on and it's about having that good work-life balance and you know that is so important and as things are different at the moment i think lisa mentioned earlier on very often at the minute we just feel like we're, all we're doing is working because we're not able to do our normal social activities or actually we don't really want to because actually should we be going out you know just because it's okay to go to go to the pub or or go to the shops do i really do i really want to at the minute because a lot of people you know felt quite fearful about about doing things like that but it is thinking about you know what are you doing to make sure you have got a good balance um 
I think I mentioned earlier on, we often notice signs in others that their resilience is low before we notice it in ourselves. So we might notice that somebody has become, you know, maybe a bit more withdrawn, a bit quiet, or actually they're getting really stressed and really, you know, really um, vocal about how they're feeling, which is quite unusual for them. And so it's, it's, you know, it's thinking about our own behaviours and actually is our resilience a bit low and are we, um, right, well, very often in sessions I run talk about mood hoovers and doom goblins. We all know a mood hoover or a doom goblin, you know, somebody who can uh, sap the life out of a room. And even if they're not actually um, anything to do with your stresses, um, just being around them, they can, they can make it all seem so much worse. But also I know I can be a mood hoover and a doom goblin as well. So it's thinking about you know, having that awareness of other people's behaviours and actually having that awareness of our own behaviours and they, how they may be impacting upon other people. But when we do find ourselves with a mood hoover or a doom goblin, um, we, we can't control how they act or how they behave or what they say. But what we can control is our how we allow them to um, impact upon us and our reactions to them. So that's something that is within your control to do. So um, somebody described it to me once as we need to surround ourselves with radiators and um, get rid of the drains because we need those people that radiate sort of um, radiate around us and um, help with our resilience rather than sap us and drain our energy. So again, it's thinking about, you know, actually, if there are certain people who have that effect on you, what can you do potentially to avoid them? Or like I say, there's some people we can't avoid, we might live with them or have to sit next to them at work, but actually we can control how we allow them to impact upon us. So thinking about what your warning signs might be if your resilience is low. So actually feeling overwhelmed, you know, very often people can feel tearful, just actually not wanting to do anything, feeling absolutely shafts all the time. Um, and I think sometimes, particularly, you know, for people working at home, um, and our reliance now on um, video calling, Zoom, WebEx, Microsoft Teams, whatever it might be, actually we cram everything in because we want to be seen that we're doing everything and, you know, we don't want people to think we're sitting at home twiddling our thumbs. Um, and so we're not giving ourselves enough time in between meetings to actually reboot ourselves and reset. Um, one thing I'll send you a link to is the third space. Um, it's a short, they've got a short introductory video to the third space. Um, Adam Fraser, I think is the chap's name, but it's just that reminder that we can't be expected to race from one thing to another all of the time and not have that time to recharge and reset in between, in between all the different demands that are placed upon us. So it's a really good one just to be aware of. Um, and I'll send you the link to that short YouTube video with all the things afterwards. Um, I mentioned around, you know, warning signs, not making enough time for eating healthily and time to exercise. And actually then, like I said, grabbing for that, that glass of wine or, or a beer when you get in. So it's just thinking, what are your warning signs? And, you know, for those with your, with your teams, what could potentially are their warning signs that you could be looking out for? So working in the NHS, you know, a lot of our staff would regularly be um, writing care plans for their patients and their service users about, you know, the care that that individual needs, be it physical or mental health. And actually, what we sometimes need to do is we need to stop and write our own care plan. So would anybody ever think of writing their own care plan? Well, I'm going to give you some um, a template so you can do just that. Well, a couple of them, actually. So um, there's a template here called my wellbeing plan. And what this does, it just gives you that bit of a reminder of things you can do. So your emergency, well, uh, your emergency reboot, sorry. Um, so the most helpful strategy is to use anytime, any place, anywhere. So if you're feeling particularly low, it's just something you can quickly do to try and give yourself that bit of a reboot. It might be something to distract yourself, excuse me, whatever's gonna work for you. And again, with a lot of this, what I might choose to put on my wellbeing plan could be completely different to all of you, but it, because it's individual to all of us, what's going to help with our resilience. There isn't a one size fits all. And just while I'm on that point, with sort of thinking about stress, different things stress us all out. 
And so something that totally stresses my, me out, Dawn might think, what's Kate stressed about that for? That's not worth stressing about. But it's appreciating that we're all different. And just because something might seem quite inconsequential to us, for somebody else, it could be a really big thing. And as our resilience dips, things that we deal with normally on a perfectly, you know, perfectly normally on a day-to-day -day basis, all of a sudden become a problem. That's when we can recognize sometimes that might be one of your warning signs that your resilience is, is dipping and you need to do something about it. So thinking about then on here, your emergency reboot, a 30 second activity. So you've got 30 seconds in between phone calls, in between meetings, in between, you know, uh, visits, whatever. Um, what am I going to do? What can I do in 30 seconds to actually um, just give myself a bit of a boost? So there's 30 seconds, three minutes, and then a daily 30 minute activity. So it's saying try to do something, at least one relaxing or fun thing a day and more if you can. So these are all things that are good for you, but you can share as well with your, with your workforce. Um, your luxury 30 minute activity. So this is something you would do once a week or more if you can. And then thinking about what you're going to do to look after yourself and people to contact if you're feeling overwhelmed. So it's just a really good reminder to have this set out um, to then, you know, think about those things. Because actually, if we think, oh, I've just finished that meeting a couple of minutes early. Brilliant. What can I do? What can I, I've got five minutes. What can I do in five minutes? And by the time you've thought about what to do, the five minutes is done. But actually, if you've got it written down and you've got your plan, then it's already there and you can think, oh, right, for five minutes, I'm going to do this. So um, it's just a really good way of planning ahead. And the other two things I was going to share with you, and again, these will be circulated afterwards, both from the, um, the Mind website. And there's the guide for employees. So it's wellness, wellness action plans. So how to support your mental health at work. So again, this is something that you could share with your employees, something that's available for anybody to access. And there's some excellent resources on the um, Mind website. And there's also a working from home, a wellness action plan that's recognized. Obviously, you know, it's different environments and you can feel a lot more isolated at home. So um, these are just two really good resources for you to have a look at um, and maybe share, as I said, with, with your employees. And actually, as for those of you who are managers and supervisors, it might be worth you actually, um, you know, using an opportunity to discuss this with your employees, because like I said, we're all different. So it might be what would be in our well-being plans would be totally different for others. So it's understanding what's going to work for other people. So if they do need that bit of extra support, we know how we can best help them. So I will share all of that with you. So has anybody got any questions? Um, Kate, it's more sort of a comment really, and it may be that other people on this session um, have experienced this either in their own organisations or you know, with, um, maybe the Chamber uh, have seen this with some of the businesses they support. But one of the issues that a lot of my clients have, so commercial clients have, is that this perception versus reality. So you've got a group of employees who are at work slogging their guts off, who feel that they're those who are furloughed and having a jolly good time on furlough. Whereas the reality probably is that those on furlough are ha not having a jolly good time at all, Kate, that they're worried about their you know, future employability, whether they're gonna be coming back to work and they're probably have, you know, having far from, a, far from a good time. So a lot of the businesses I'm supporting at the moment are having that sort of issue where I guess there's a, I guess it's linked to well-being where that there's that tension between groups of employees who feel one way and that's their perception but again the reality would be something else um yeah I've um you know I've talked about it a lot with our teams because there, there almost seems to be that bit of resentment so we've got mm. frontline clinical workers you know from the NHS who are out there and they're seeing patients and they're they're up to their eyeballs in PPE and you know um, whereas then, you know, oh, it's all right for that lot from, from corporate sitting at home, working at home, they're all all right, you know, but actually not necessarily understanding that those they've been told to work from home, they don't have an option in relation to that. So, but actually that, that builds that resentment mm. um, between, you know, thinking about, about that. So I suppose what's really important there is that clear communication that actually, again, for us, all corporate services have been asked wherever possible, they must work from home. You know, we fully appreciate everything that's been, you know, with uh, that's not possible for all of our teams um, to, to be able to do that. But I know, again, you know, a lot, a lot of our staff have joked, oh, I wouldn't mind a month's furlough. But actually, for a lot of people, that's really stressful. And finances um, at the moment, again, is really stressful. 
and I've got some good um, some good links of financial um, support that um, you know we've been trying to make staff aware of because again okay our staff none of our staff have been furloughed but that's not to say that their partners haven't or you know members of their family so again it, that finance is a big is a big stress for for people but no I can, I can appreciate that and I think you know it is just like I said trying to make sure that there's good communication and people are understanding of that and you know actually everybody's situation is really quite different at the moment yeah and one of the things we're trying very hard to do as a business and I'm sure the chamber will be doing the same um is just to keep that one team going so none of the them and us type scenario that actually we're all in this yeah. together so being as inclusive as possible on certain things whether it is these sort of online quizzes that we've done to death haven't we but you know those sorts of things so it, it, it tries to avoid that tension or at least you know minimize it yeah yeah and actually just acknowledging that you know i can understand why why people would be feeling like this and actually but actually these are the facts behind it and you know um so like i said a lot of it is around around the communication with it as well and like you said it's really good that you're trying to maintain that that one team um so a lot of with a lot with resilience is thinking about what is in your control. I managed, I mentioned earlier on about your drains and your radiators, and it's managing your energy gains and your energy drains. So actually, what is it that has a positive impact on you, and what doesn't, and what can you do to do more of the positive, and you know, to try and avoid some of the negatives so that it's not draining you. And um, with uh, Dawn mentioned earlier on about trying to look at things in a positive way, and it is about reframing your thoughts and trying actually to put a positive, you know. A positive spin on things. Um, my colleague Jane always talks about a book called Flip It um, and it's about sort of flipping those negatives into positives um, and so you know it is you know with you're stuck in a traffic jam and you might oh, for god's sake or oh, you're but actually by being stuck in a traffic jam you can actually listen to the radio you can look at the view so it's just trying to flip your thoughts from negative to positives. Know as well when you're going to seek when you need to seek support I mean, the support options available within the organisations differ from organisation to organisation, um, but actually it's making sure that your employees are aware of the support that's available to them, thinking about actually how that support may need to be adjusted slightly in times such as these, where we can't just, you know, um, all meet up and catch up and things. So actually then, um, you know, looking at what support you have got in place and, and is it what's needed by the staff? Ask them. You know, we've done um, a number of surveys actually with staff just on Survey Monkey and things, just really quickly. You know, we can make assumptions a lot of the time about what staff want and what staff need, but actually, is that really what they want and need? For example, when when COVID first, um, when lockdown first happened, one of the first things we did, we always, we always have a count, an external counselling service available for our staff that's sort of, you know, eight or five. We made that available 24 7 so that staff would have been able to contact the counselling service at any time of day or night and speak to a trained counsellor and we all thought what a what a great idea what what are we you know what a great thing we're doing to support our staff the uptake has been absolutely minimal the the uptake during the day during normal working hours is is very similar you know it's it did peak a little bit in april time um but that's gone back to sort of normal levels but actually that out of hours support lots of staff were going oh this is great you know it's good that it's been introduced but people weren't using it um, so actually, you know, it's thinking about what we can be doing and a lot of staff have said to me, actually, what I'd really appreciate is actually if the trust just gave us tea and coffee for the year, you know, so we weren't having to worry about that. Um, or it's, it's really simple things, just that acknowledgement that it's a bit crap at the minute, but actually everyone's doing their best and, you know, we appreciate what you're doing. So, um, but it, so it is finding out from staff what they want and, you know we were guilty of it making assumptions about what they wanted and what they needed um so for any of you who have the uh you know opportunity of using survey monkey or anything like that it is a good thing to it is a good thing just to check in with people and actually see how people are doing as well um i've got on here about what you can do as a team to maintain the resilience of your team so we mentioned earlier on about you know actually trying to you know maintain that team resilience and getting people together um, I think when, they, again, when COVID first started, we were having sort of daily catch up calls because the picture was changing so frequently 
um, that actually we had that daily check-in at one o'clock with the team and um, that then went to twice weekly and now it's around once a week but we have been better at having those regular team meetings um, you know and some of my colleagues I've probably not seen since March April time um, because they have been you know working at home that whole time um, I mentioned about thinking about things that are not in your that are in your control so you're you know I'm sure you've all heard of your circles of control and influence and things so it is remembering sometimes we spend a lot of time worrying and stressing about things that are totally out of our control um, and something that doesn't help with that a lot of the time particularly when it comes to to covid is actually the media we could be bombarded 24 7 everything we look at everything we listen to you know you're on you're on face ache you're on twitter it's everything is covid 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 um and actually in the news is there ever any good news it's all just you know um the number of infections the number of deaths but actually they don't mention that the amount of testing has increased so actually we're going to have more people that are positive so you know and actually so it's thinking about how are things like that impacting upon you particularly as well like i said with social media and yes i did call it face ache um it has its place doesn't it facebook but it can be a bit of a pain in the neck as well so um but it's thinking about actually how much time because we have got a lot more time on our hands potentially at the moment because we're not you know doing the things we would normally do so are we spending too much time looking at what's in the media and almost um having having overload so it's thinking about you know actually could one of the things that you're doing um sorry my computer's telling me it wants to reboot so i'm just snoozing it sorry um could one of the things you you need to do be to um think about how much time you are spending on social media how much time you are listening to news watching the news um you know a lot of my colleagues have said to me right i listen to the is it the six o'clock briefing five o'clock briefing and that's it now and that's the only one I'll, I'll listen to and i'll try and avoid it um because it is that constant bombardment um it's then thinking about those of you like i said who are managers and leaders and we had that um that initial phase didn't we that that preparation phase we're anticipating anxiety we're anticipating everything that was going to be happening to us and and how this was all going to play out and then you've got the active phase where everyone's just on autopilot they're getting on with everything they're just you know on on autopilot and just boring on through getting to that point then of maybe a bit of disillusionment and exhaustion um, and you know that's so that's more of that active phase and then hopefully in the not too distant future that recovery phase as well so the recovery from this and thinking about the long-term impacts that potentially this is going to have on us as individuals but also us as businesses as well so um my colleagues in psychology shared with me some um, principles of sustaining staff well-being in the active phase and like I said I am going to share this all with you but thinking about visible leadership being visible and available and being supportive thinking about your communication strategy even if you've got nothing to tell them tell them you've got nothing to tell them don't tell them nothing because if we're not saying anything to people they get very suspicious because we must be hiding something or you know not saying something is worse often than just saying actually i've got no update today because there's nothing to update you on and we've just got you know we're just plodding on but rather than saying nothing at all so just think about your communication and also make sure that there's that two-way communication that staff are able to feed back to you so i mentioned about the surveys but actually you know think about what communication strategies you've got in place um think about that human connection which we've mentioned a lot and actually you know what how you can maybe change your mechanisms for doing that and it, we've said to managers a lot um, so my role sits within the HR team and one thing my HR colleagues have said a lot over the last few months is be creative just because now you know a member of staff is coming to you with um, they've had added pressures because of you know uh, childcare, homeschooling carers etc actually be creative with what you're offering them because would you rather somebody was working a bit more flexibly at the moment and um you know a bit differently and a bit outside the box not on something we'd have done normally or would you prefer that they're not in because they're not able to sustain being in work so it's thinking about where you can be creative with doing these things um, and a, a lot of it is normalizing as well how we're feeling because actually at the moment 
it has been a bit rubbish and it's okay to not be okay because you know i think unless you're a total robot at the moment this has impacted upon us all in some way shape or form and actually for some people having that um having work has been um a positive thing it's helped with routine for others then it's you know actually it's the home bit that's been more stressful rather than the work bit for others it's the other way around for, for some people it's everything and it's trying to then think what you can do to um have that good balance with that and to and like i said normalize that actually it's okay to not be okay at the moment um and as i met, i've mentioned a few times it is for those of you who are managers or supervisors and you're the ones looking after everybody else you can't do that unless you're looking after yourself first was it you know would put your own oxygen mask on before you you try and put everyone else's on so that's the message we get on the plane isn't it and that's what we've got to do we've got to look after ourselves before we're you know we're looking after everyone else i'm the health and well-being lead i'm great at giving other people advice about what they should be doing to maintain their own health and well-being but i'm not always great at taking that advice myself and sometimes i need to give myself a bit of a kick to remember that you know i need to be looking after myself as well so um i'm just checking my notes um it's allowing space for taking stock and thinking about actually the impact this has had upon us um you know and allowing people that opportunity to talk about talk about how things have affected them it's thinking about actually like i said um we're uh, we're in the process of um thinking about you know how we can recognize everything that our staff have done over the last few months nhs is the is a stressful place to work at the best of times but throw in a global pandemic and that ramps things up a bit for everybody um and so you know we've had lots of discussions about what we can do to to sort of recognize the impact this has had on our staff and um you know I think I mentioned earlier on for a lot of staff that's just somebody saying thanks it's been a really rough day but thanks ever so much you're doing a great job and you know well, let's do the same tomorrow but it's just that acknowledgement that you know things are things are difficult um think about then like I said oh my light's gone off again um those mechanisms you can have in place for your well-being services and actually are they are they right for what your staff need and want at the moment and then think about um that ongoing peer support as well for staff um i'm not sure if any of you have like mental health first aiders in the workplace or you're you're familiar with mental health first aid i'm sure you are um but actually you know how can you utilize i should be in a meeting now about mental health first aiders um, but thinking about those mental health first aiders and actually how you can utilize them in, in situations such as this um, to, you know, to support, to support staff. Um, and I'm sure I've forgotten to tell you lots of things, but has anybody got any questions? I thought I'll be done in about 10 minutes and now it's 10 to 4. <laughs> has anybody got any questions or comments? <coughs> Hopefully that was a little bit useful and I, I think the resources that I've got will be useful to share with you afterwards. Um, but please feel free. I'm more than happy for Olivia to share my contact details. So if anybody wants to speak to me individually, I'm more than happy to do, you know, speak to you outside of, uh, outside of this Zoom call. So drop me an email or give me a ring. My contact details will be on the email. Um, you know, I'm always, always happy to, to have a chat. 